space, the ocean of emptiness, the great unknown, the final frontier of football? Since Super Bowl I, our fascination with space has been entwined with football's biggest spectacle. We're on the International Space Station. We're gonna do a coin toss here. Here we go. The coin's gone. We gotta go find that coin though. All right, Here, let's go. A Super Bowl is always a unique experience. The next best place to space for a Super Bowl is our hometown of Houston. And that's exactly where I went, home of Super Bowl 51 and the Johnson Space Center, to talk to three men whose experiences are out of this world. You guys have the coolest jobs. <laughs> You've like changed the world and done crazy things. Daryl Gaines is the assistant to the center director at Johnson Space Center and has worked for NASA for the past 25 years. Leland Melvin is a retired astronaut and has flown on two space shuttle missions to the International Space Station. Scott Kelly has spent 520 days in space, including his groundbreaking one-year mission. Katie Nolan is a certified expert in all things interstellar, I may be out of my league on this one. Most little it. boys dream of being either an astronaut or a football player or involved in football in some way. Did you have a dream of both? Is this what you always wanted to do? I quickly realized at the peewee level that this career was not a possibility for me. He was thinking, you know, either he's going to play with the Texans yeah. or, you know, he's going to do this one-year mission. Yeah. yeah. Texans, you know, so. one There was year, no Texas. football yeah. possibilities ever in my life. <laughs> he won't even play along with it. No. He's like, no, I was really bad. I was bad. What position were you in Pee Wee football? I played uh, defensive line. I don't know why. I had no idea what I was doing. But, uh, yeah, my my football dreams were, were over at the age of about uh, 12. What about you guys? Space, <laughs> yeah, I, football, which came first? Uh, football for me, I mean, I grew up in a house full of boys, and that's what we did. Football was everything. Daryl Gaines played at LaFleur High School in Mobile, Alabama, and earned a scholarship to Mississippi Valley State University, where he played defensive back. Yeah, my dad was a football player, so I played football, basketball, and tennis. Leland Melvin played wide receiver at Heritage High School in Lynchburg, Virginia, and earned a scholarship to the University of Richmond, where he set school records for career receiving yards and receptions, which he still holds today. There's the diving catch by Leland Melvin. Junior year, Jerry Rice, because you're yep. at Mississippi Valley yep, State, Mississippi right? Valley, right. Yep. Jerry Rice and I were neck and neck for a little while. You were neck and neck yeah. with Jerry Rice Catching for what? For, for the first few weeks. Oh, okay. Of, you know, number of catches. And then yeah. was it close? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Daryl, you covered him in practice, you were telling That's me right, before. Yeah. Of course, he was at a you whole other... You covered Leland? No, Jerry Rice. No, Jerry, Jerry Rice. Rice. Yeah. yeah. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. So we had a nickname for him. We called him Jerry World Rice because his hands were so big, he could hold the world in it. Touchdown! <laughs> <laughs> When I went to Valley, I, I had no idea who Jerry Rice was my freshman year. And in the first practice, he ran this underneath route. You know, I took a, may have been a little bit of a cheap shot, but I hit him and uh, he fell back on his neck. And all I saw was this big coach come running at me. And I'm thinking, you know, he's gonna tell me, oh, that was a good hit or whatever. He's like, no, you get out of here. You get out of my stadium. So I got kicked out of practice for a week. For hurting Jerry Rice. For hurting Jerry Rice. But That's I, amazing. I did not know who he was, so. <laughs> You're like, I'm just doing my job. <laughs> After graduating, Gaines spent a training camp with the Chiefs and then worked at McDonnell Douglas Aircraft. Melvin was taken in the 11th round of the 1986 draft. I went to the Lions training camp and then I pulled a hamstring. So that was kind of nagging me the whole time I was there. And then Dallas had me come back home and train with the Cowboys in mini camp in March. And so I started graduate school at University of Virginia, catching footballs by day for America's team. And at night, I'm watching material science engineering courses. And then I go out with Danny White one morning to run a half speed out because I'm stretching, trying to get you know my hamstring straight. And Tom Landry walks on the field. Oh, and wow. I see this whole thing come into play. And then he does an audible to take it to the house. And I'm like, oh no. So I, you know, I, I couldn't like not run the long route and I go for it and I pull my hamstring again. So oh, no. I blame Danny White, or I thank <laughs> Danny White, for helping oh, me get Andrew. to space. T minus 10, 9, go for 8, start. 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1. 
liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis. On February 7, 2008, Leland Melvin became the only NFL draft pick to reach outer space. And he brought a few NFL keepsakes along for the ride. I had my Cowboys and my Lions jerseys I took up. And where are those now? They're in the NFL Football Hall of Fame in Canton. Wow. These two jerseys have about 5 million miles on them collectively. So about 10 million miles of flying. Yeah. So you are I in made it to the Hall of Fame even though I didn't play in any <laughs> Any regular season game. Oh, are you the only I wasn't uh, in, inducted into the Hall of Fame? I wasn't in, no. It was yeah. just, here's the jersey. Well, those are minor yeah. details yeah. that you yeah. don't have to tell anyone. You can right. just say, yeah. I've been to space, yeah. and also my jersey's in the, the Hall of Fame. And Scott, I don't want to leave you out. How did you go from Pee Wee football star, I'll say it, no, star, definitely not. to space? Well, you know, my big thing with football is I'm a huge football fan. Yes. So for me, when I'm in space for a year, I really look forward to the start of the football season. It really was a big morale boost for me to uh, experience it in such a place like space and the International Space Station was something that I really loved to do and looked forward to every weekend. You watched every Texans every game? Every Texans game. You didn't miss a single one? Not a single one. Wow. That is yeah. quite an achievement. I mean, yeah. being up in space for and a year, games. probably an achievement yeah, as other, well. And other games, too. But yeah. Definitely every Texans game. I've always wanted to be an astronaut. I don't know if I'm cut out for it, but I was thinking maybe, like, I could try it out. We have some stuff you could probably try out here in, yeah. in this uh, training facility we're in. Absolutely. You think I got the right stuff? Or do you think, Houston, I... we have a problem? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here in the partial gravity simulator, or as it's known, the pogo. Katie, you can do it. I don't know you if that's do, true. You can do it, Katie. I don't feel as confident as you, as you are. Just relax a little bit. OK, copy that, Scott. With that, if you are clear, we can give Oh, God, it's happening girl. now? It's happening now. We're picking you up. Holy You're on your way to space. Oh, okay. Now just relax right there. Now imagine you've just opened the hatch and the earth is 250 miles down below and you're going you're going 17,500 miles an hour. Okay, I'm gonna not imagine any of those things. Hey Scott, you're gonna find the gap spanner on handrail 231. Oh dear God. That would be like the gap spanner to get you <laughs> on the space station. Man. Oh, man. If you were to just release that handrail where you can't touch it, you're in big trouble. Because if you're an inch away, you might as well be a mile away. What if you swim? <laughs> Swimming is not going to help. Okay, now, 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 now I know what this feels like. That, now I, I know what this feels like. <laughs> Don't let go. The number one rule. That's exactly how you'd have to oh, do yeah. it. There you, there you go. Do it? Pretty good. I'm actually kind of. Right I'm actually stuff. kind of impressed. He's actually kind of impressed. <laughs> Katie's got the right yeah. stuff. You guys are really good teammates. Now that I've gotten my taste of space, it's easy to see that the stuff it takes to make it in the final frontier is the same stuff it takes to make it on the football field. I think preparing for a mission is the same way of preparing for a game. Preseason training camp, you know, all the work that goes into that, you know, it's, it's kind of the same thing at NASA. With a mission, you know, you plan, train, and fly. Yeah, and I think you've trained so much that you just know what to expect from the other person. It was almost like a quarterback and a receiver. You just know that if this secondary is rolling up on you, you know what that other route's going to be. And if we had situations like that in our simulations, you just knew exactly what to do. You could tap somebody on the shoulder or tap to the book. Ready, two inches. Fire. The initial contact got captured. Teamwork is critically important. Ground's critically important. The lead flight director for the mission is kind of more like the head coach. Hey, it's a low trajectory! Houston copies, and here's ED-1 and 2 loud and clear. Yeah, you know, you're just an extension of the, this larger group that's uh, working really hard on your behalf on Earth. Space flight is the biggest team sport there is, and it's incredibly important that we all work together to make what is seemingly impossible possible.